Hi, you guys, Coach Nikki, and today we are talking about secrets to a better run, but I want to preface that with this doesn't have to be just about running. It's just about moving, and as I always say, we are all athletes. Our sport is life, so whatever it is that you just want to be a little bit better at, today we're going to go through seven tips to becoming either a better runner, cycler, um, whether you're working out like at Kaya, uh, hiking, kayaking, swimming, all of these tips are going to help you just move your body more efficiently if you want to become faster. Um, I'm gonna share some supplements, um, some of like structural and postural tips to help you move your body in a way that's more supportive for you. So if you're just logging on, please take a second, type in where you're calling in from that we all get to know each other. Questions, if you can put them in the chat. If you're joining us on Facebook, welcome. Uh, I always go back through, answer questions. I love seeing that we're all connected. And if you're watching this on replay, just please type in replay. And so then we know um, that we're all connected. So the seven tips that we are working uh, with today is number one is finding your why. Number two is the benefits of cross training and having a coach to really help you. So one of the secrets into becoming a faster uh, a runner at all, right? Anything is just having a coach to really help you progress through that. Um, number three is just making it joyful, fun, playful, finding like great experiences. Four is the actual like how to of running and then how to get fast if you want to. And number five is breathing for a better run, uh, breathing for a better life, right? Like I think uh, we, we all tend to shallow breathe. And so we're going to talk about the art of breathing and bringing and oxygenating your body. I'm going to go over some supplements. Always, always, always check with your healthcare providers uh, when it comes to adding anything, uh, especially when it comes to supplements, but anything new uh, to make sure that it's supportive for you. I'm just going to go over some of the things that I use personally and some of the things uh, that I suggest for um, our like running team. And, um, and then finally is I just want to encourage you to get out of your comfort zone and try something new. Okay, so I was running yesterday. Um, I'm training for the RTO, which is the Reno Tahoe Odyssey. It's in Reno. Um, Nancy, maybe you could type in. I don't even really know how many miles it is total. I think it's like 178 miles. Um, but we all take turns. We run three different groups, uh, three different sets of a run. My first run is eight miles. It's like uphill and then downhill and uphill. Um, so I, that's what I'm training for right now. I'm also training for the Tahoe Rim Trail. So just a little bit more endurance, but in general, I really, my training comes in my cross training and that I am a strong runner because I really focus on building strength. Now, when, and I'm not a very fast runner, I it's not like in my nature to, even necessarily care about my timed mile but what i know for sure is running is my connection to to god to universe to when i get outside it's solved some of my most difficult problems um i've when i've been suffering from grief or you know loss of a loved one the trees and running um soothes my soul and helps me problem solve. Um, it's also been the catalyst to all of my businesses and to different ideas when I get into any kind of rut. I can tend to put too much into my day, shocking, and my mind sometimes feels like it's gonna like explode out of my ears. If I go for a quick run um, or a long run, my brain, kind of just files things in the proper the proper files in my brain and I just feel more connected. So I think one of the most important things that I want to ask you is 
why do you want to run? Why do you want to cycle? Why do you want to swim or hike? Or because, and you know, whether you do Kaya or not, but we, we want you to be good at Kaya, but great at life. So just taking a second. And if you do have a journal, like what is your why? Why do you want to, because a lot of times it's, extrinsic goals outside goals like i want to lose weight so i want to run um i want to run a faster time mile i want to which there's nothing wrong with those but i think where you're going to find the real joy in what we do when it comes to like outdoor sports is connecting with the inter the inner why and my inner why is that running when um, I was running yesterday and I run, you know, kind of early and the sun finally like peaked out and I just like put my arms up and I was like, oh my gosh, like the sun is hitting me. The sun is hitting my eyes. My circadian rhythm is connected to the earth and it just fills your body with the energy that you need for the day. So if you can just take a second and write down what is your why and because then when things get tough, because as uh, we've got Nancy on here, so Nancy is like one of our like all time Carson runners. And literally you guys, like she runs in the dark, she runs in the snow, she runs in the ice. And because her why is greater than the uncomfortableness that the environment gives us. Um, I know many of us are in that same boat. I'm just calling out Nancy just because I can see her and I see, uh, see what she does day to day. Um, but if your why is really strong, then environmental factors won't stop you. And so always coming back to the why is one of the most important things that we can do for, to help ourselves stay motivated and stay consistent. Because if you do want to be any type of endurance athlete, and again, we are all athletes, like our sport is life. Like just because I'm saying like athlete, I want that to resonate with you because you are an athlete, whether you're walking and jogging. Like I said, I am not a fast runner. Literally, you guys, I've run my whole life. I run like a 10 minute mile when I'm going uphill is slower than that. And it's, it, but to me, I am a runner because I love what it does for my soul. I love what it does for my connection to something greater than my busy day and my busy life. So when you think about your why, write it down like on a post-it, stick it somewhere that you can see it. And it's the same with anything. It's like why we work out, uh, why we eat healthy, that if you can dial in all of the like the the things that resonate the most with you the more consistent you'll be and the more that you'll build it into a habit and then when the weather sucks you still get out there you get your little tennis on and you go um when you get a bad night's sleep you still wake up and you get it you get it and you get your workout in um because your why is driving you not that extrinsic like you know i want to lose weight or you know, these kind of like pressures that we put on ourselves. I hope your why brings you lightness and makes you just, you know, really want to do this. Okay, so cross training and the benefit of having a coach. So like I said, and this is like, um, I don't even know who it was. Oh, it was um, a couple Minden girls were saying last summer, um, Oh no, it was actually Chico. So I was in Chico and I was working out with the Chico girls and they're big, like 50 K runners. They're like big runners. And they said, you know, when the smoke, um, kind of crushed their, their outdoor runs, they joined Kaya. And when they joined Kaya, they all of a sudden, when the smoke went away, they were, they were faster runners. And then they didn't have the same injuries that they had years prior. And Sometimes uh, we can get super focused on whatever it is, cycling, running, um, these kind of like single sports. But if we don't cross train, we're more likely to get injuries and our body is not as fast and effective as it could be. So I run three days a week. Um, I run one just kind of for fun i try to do speed work once a week but it's it, i 
I tend to, to skip that day. And then I always do like one long run. Um, and then I do my kaya cross training four days a week. So I run three days a week and, and I do a lot of like long runs, but the kai the cross training that I do strengthens me and helps me do these like longer endurance runs or fast 5Ks or, you know, marathons, half marathons, whatever it is, 10K. So find cross training classes and commit to them. Make sure that your coach is watching your form. So you're performing these strength training exercises correctly. So I hope when you come to my workouts and when you do live stream with me, you share your video and I cue you to use the right muscles to strengthen these supporting muscles in our body so we don't get imbalances and we don't get injured. So we could go over how to become an efficient, fast, effective, fall in love with running, all of these supplements all day long. But what I'm gonna do is just go over a couple exercises that I think that are, are helpful for you. And then I want to invite you to come into our workouts uh, because we do have coaches to watch your form and strengthen your body from the inside out. So when you get out, your ankles are strong, your quadriceps, hamstrings, glutes are strong. So you're not pressing on those knees and those joints. Your core is strong to keep your posture upright. And then your arms are strong to drive that speed. Okay. So when we're thinking about cross training, I want one, you to get a coach, but I also want you to be your own coach. So when you're exercising so many times we can be doing like, um, you know, say deadlifts and I'm like, Oh, I didn't have enough coffee. I'm so sleepy. What's that girl doing? Is she lifting heavier weight than me? Should I be lifting heavier weight? And so we're doing all this stuff and we're just mindlessly going through these motions that are not effective. So if you are being your own coach, be it in your run or in your cross training workout, this is like an active meditation. Bring your mind back to your body and tell your mind, hey, this is where I am. How can I increase my form? to help my performance. So ask yourself constantly and ask your coach. You know, a lot of times we don't know if you want like feedback and like adjustments because of one, you know, COVID and all this stuff, but just ask your coach, hey, am I doing this right? Do I look good when I'm running? Uh, do I as, you know, are my deadlifts proper? And then it invites your coach, especially in a group atmosphere, to give you that feedback that you need to increase the, um, just like the results that you're looking for. So uh, deadlifts and hip raises, so heavier weights for deadlifts are really important. It's really important how you pick up a weight and how you set it down. So if I pick up my weight with my legs straight and my back bent, I can strain my low back. You want to pick up the weight with your legs. And then deadlifts teach you to, lose, to use your glutes. So there's a syndrome called lazy butt syndrome. And that's when we're using our quadriceps, our hamstrings, and our hip flexors more. And then our butt just kind of like hangs on like in the back and is not powered. This is a big muscle. And in order for you to use your glutes to power your performance, you need to train your body to do so. And deadlifts and hip raises are a really good one. So deadlifts, and I'll go over this in my workout too, so join me. But tuck, so it's like you have two suspenders. So real quick with me, tighten your suspenders. You have two suspenders between your hips and your ribs. Everybody put your hands on your suspenders, tighten them. Whoop. So you've got this here, booty bump, or here. Whoop. Tighten those suspenders. Then when you come back, you're like, I have a rope around your hips. You're pushing your hips back and then you're, targeting your glutes so see you can see that little booty bump i have to take that booty bump out by tightening my suspenders and then i drive that energy to my glutes so you can look at a ton of different videos of ways to do a proper deadlift but just focusing on deadlifts focusing on hip raises so you know you're laying down you walk your feet in put heavy weight on your hips and then just but don't let your hamstrings take over don't let the backs of your legs and really power those 
hips to have strong glutes. Deadlifts, hip raises, planks are really important. So when we're running, when we're cycling, we don't want to be here. We want to be here or running here. So in order to have strong posture, you have to have a strong core. So it's strong front, side, and back core, not just the front. So doing like a 30 second plank, working your way up to one minute, but front plank, 11 with the hands, pretend my hands are on my yoga mat, my knees are down, I can lift my knees up. Again, the suspenders tighten your tummy and protect your low back. So working through planks, side planks, and then back planks are a really important key to help you roll your shoulders down and back. So if you can stand up just for a second, think about shoulders down and back, 90 degree arms, so keep your arms in tight. Don't let your arms flare, not going side to side. Bring them in, close your ribs, push your chin back a little bit, and then just drive your knees forward. So whether we're hiking or walking, you wanna think about your posture, and you can always tell, like, I always think I'm like, I look so good at the end of my run or, you know, a race, I'm like, yeah, like I see my girls and I'm all excited. And then I see the end of the pictures and I'm like this. And I'm like, what in the world? Because I'm tired, right? Like I'm I'm just exhausted. And so I'm bending over. So remind yourself constantly, use your abs, push that pelvis forward and roll those butterfly wings down and back. And then when you are in your cross training workouts, you know, arm strength, because your arms drive your legs, Core strength, because your core drives your posture. Leg strength, your knees drive that forward motion and then drive your power forward with your glutes. Okay, so cross training workouts. I know this is a lot, I always talk so much. I love you guys, I'm sorry, I want so much to give you. Um, so plan fun adventures if you are kind of thinking about being a runner. Um, if you have injuries and you can't run, that's why you need a coach in cross training because our job is to strengthen the muscles all around your injury so you can run again, you can power walk again, you can get out there and cycle and do all of those things. If we have an injury and we stop moving, all of a sudden our mobility goes to the pot, our uh, visceral fat goes up, our depression goes up, don't stop because of an injury. Just get a good coach and start cross training. And then we can strengthen the muscles around that injury because you were born to run. You were born to move. You were born to do all those amazing things that we get out there and can enjoy life. So don't let an injury stop you. Just make sure that you get the proper coach to help build your body back up to so we can get out there and do all these amazing things together. Um, so planning fun experiences is one of the best ways uh, to just making it fun and joyful. A treadmill, you guys, treadmill stinks, right? I mean, maybe you love it and I don't want to bag on it, but oh my gosh, if I have to run on a treadmill, I'm like, my mind is crazy. I'm actually selling my treadmill this weekend because I, I just need it out of my house. Even in the snow, I would rather run in the snow than I would on a treadmill. So just making sure that if you are going to run like one or two days a week, just Try to find a new trail and um, find a new friend, a new like running group and um, ask some of your Kaya sisters to go for a run with you, but make it an enjoyable experience. And like, you know, for me, I like, I like the, um, I'm reading the book Atomic Habits for Atomic Habits for like, uh, for brick. I've read it many times, but it's like habit stacking. So I know that I'm going to go for a run. I want to drink my warm lemon water. So I put my warm lemon water in my in my running water bottle and I drink it and it's like a little treat. So I'm like, oh, I get to run every time I drink it. It's nice and warm and it's cold outside. So just find ways that you can bring little bits of joy, uh, lots of beautiful views. Maybe it's with your dog uh, to increase and turn up the volume of joy when it comes to running, because sometimes in order to become a runner, you have to get through that uncomfortable, right? We have to get comfortable with being uncomfortable. Yikes. Okay. Um, so tips 
to running and to how to run fast or just to, to be a runner. And again, across the board with different uh, sports. But the first thing is start slow. So don't increase your miles more than 10% a week because whether you're a seasoned runner, you're just coming off a long winter season, uh, you know, sometimes we get like uh, the smoke stops us or, you know, different things, uh, vacation, make sure that you're not increasing your mileage too quickly because that will dramatically increase the likelihood of you getting injured. So 10% per week and then just really listen to your body. Uh, consistency is one of the biggest things. With consistency comes change. So decide how many days a week you're gonna get out there and do it, whether you're gonna do it with a group or you're gonna do it on your own. Two days a week is fine, it's great, just be consistent. Um, and then when you're thinking about like how to become or, or get faster once you're like, okay, I'm just gonna, start with a jog around the building. When my coach says, hey, go for a jog around the building, I'm gonna, instead of power walking, I'm gonna just add a little bit of, of uh, jog in, and that's where I'm gonna start. And then you're gonna build up and build up and build up. And then once you kind of feel like, okay, I've got, like I'm running around the building, I feel good, I'm like working on my posture, I'm driving my knees, my arms are driving, I'm staying light on my joints. Uh, then we can add some like intervals, we can add fartlicks, we can add uh, hill repeats. And so if you want to become a more efficient and fast runner, it's good to add challenge to your runs. And I'm talking to myself because I'm the queen of my run is my peace and my love. And I, you know, I don't like to be like, oh, uh, because it kind of takes the joy out of it for me. So I try to just do that once a week and I'll look up and a fart lick is like, I'll look up and say, okay, I'm going to sprint to that tree and then I'm going to jog to the next tree, sprint to the tree, jog to. So it's just kind of picking up the pace 30 seconds and then slowing it down for 30 seconds. Um, you can do this on a track. So sometimes I just go to the local track. I sprint a 200 and then I jog half sprint, jog, try to do like six of those. Um, and then hill repeats. If all of a sudden you're running and you're like, oh no, there's the hill. You're like, yes, I'm gonna do that hill four times. So you like run up it and then jog down. And jogging down is just as much of um, a concentrated effort as jogging up because we wanna be light, but we also wanna have good form. And my superpower for sure is like running down because I've got, strong, strong legs um, that can handle the impact. But when you're running down, you want to think bun kickers. And again, lead with the hips, roll the shoulders down and back and relax. Uh, so many times we're like, oh, 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 we're like, resist, resist, resist. And that's a lot of impact on your knees. So relax, breathe, you know, keep your, keep your shoulders away from your ears and then just let your heart lead you. When you go and turn to do the hill repeat up, it's little teeny tiny fast steps and your arms drive your legs. So um, your cadence goes up. And again, we talk about this forever, but fast cadence up the hill, get down, up the hill, get down. Um, and that will help you with your running. And then always, always, always focus on your form. Okay, so breathing for a better run. So right now with me is think about three inhales to one exhale. So if you can stand up and go. So I'm thinking my for my inhales, I'm bringing oxygen. And first, actually, let's do belly breathing. So if you can, lay down on the ground or put your hand on your belly and see if you breathe in through your nose or in through your mouth and your nose, whatever, is see if you could get that oxygen all the way deep into your belly. This activates your diaphragm. We tend to shallow breathe most of the day, which is not great for our lungs, not great, great for the oxygenation of our body. So if you can utilize this, uh, when you're working or when you're sitting around is activate your diaphragm. So hand on your belly, deep breathing. And then when you're running, try to, if you're listening to music, like turn it off and think about rhythmic breathing with your running steps. So 
three inhales, one exhale, three inhales, one exhale. And then when you start like turning up the heat, like so say if you're doing like hill repeats or those fart licks or whatever, then you can go to two to, two to one. But thinking about just breathing deeply and expanding your lungs, which oxygenates your body and helps you, uh, you know, just all of your cardiovascular and uh, aerobic conditioning heighten. Okay, so breathing, try the rhythmic running, belly breathing, supplements. I, I love you guys, and I'm going to go through these fast, but I will do, if you're interested, just tell me to do another uh, Facebook Live on supplements. So I do Aura, um, and Deb, you could, if you don't mind, maybe you can link some of like our Aura supplements. So I do pre-workout, which gives energy. It gives you like the anti-inflammatory. It also has like magnesium in it that's really important. Um, I take my probiotics every day because your gut health reduces inflammation and when you're running and, and you know working out hard that inflammation can be an issue so you want to really make sure that you have really good gut health um i do take cordyceps which is like archaea mushrooms so if you want those just let us know but cordyceps really helps with energy um and uh BCAs, so those branch chain amino acids, are really important for building strength. So you can get them. Just make sure if you do like this, our aura protein powder that we sell has a full chain, full chain branch chain amino acids. So they have all of the all of the BA BCAAs that you need, but it also has 21 different kinds of superfoods. Um, so I use that. And um, I mean, omegas are really important because your omegas are again like that anti-inflammatory. And then a good multivitamin. So your multivitamin should have Bs. Uh, so like your B12 helps with energy. And sometimes I do take electrolytes uh, when I'm sweating a lot and it's really hot out. So I do like an electrolyte replacement. Okay, so that is it for becoming uh, kind of like these secrets to running. Some of them might be secrets. Some of them may have been things that you have heard before. But what I encourage you to do is just say like, because a lot of times we say like, I'm not a runner. Um, it's not for me, but we are all meant to move. We are all meant to run. So start with your why. Uh, find cross training that you love. Hopefully you love Kaya, but of course I support everything and anything that gets you moving and support your body so find a great coach uh plan fun experiences so right now maybe reach out to a couple people and say hey do you want to do um a run this summer there's so many fun ways to like get out and do hikes and all that good stuff uh really start by being your own coach making sure that you're focused on like your running form and that you can that that you know like don't increase too quickly, don't go off the couch and get out there and do six miles. Like make sure that, that we're increasing slowly. Uh, breathing is very, very important. So rhythmic breathing, belly breathing for everything, but it will definitely fire up your running. Uh, find some supplements. Magnesium is really important. Um, all of the branched chain amino acids are really important to build muscle. Muscle is our weapon in life burns fat, builds muscle, and then, you know, really just get out there and experience life because running, cycling, swimming, hiking, uh, paddle boarding, all of this hopefully includes sunshine, which is vitamin D and so good for you, includes like time in the trees and in nature and all around just makes us more joyful and better humans. So, okay. I love you guys. Thanks for being here. I appreciate your time. I hope to see you at a workout. Get out there. Tag me um, on like Instagram or on uh, on Facebook, uh, Coach Nikki Warren. Tag me in your running, hiking, uh, endurance adventures. I want to be your coach. I want to be your biggest supporter. And I want to see all the great stuff you're doing out there in this world. Okay. Love you guys. Bye.